Close your eyes and watch your breath. Follow it all the way in, all the way out. Each breath coming in, each breath going out. Make a promise to yourself you're going to stay here. And then keep that promise. That's where you develop a quality of truthfulness. You see that something's good. You want something that's really good. But you realize that you have other desires that might get in the way. And so you make a determination. This is what you really want. And then you try to make sure that you stick with that. This requires that you have discernment in choosing a good goal, that you're truthful in sticking to it, you're willing to give up anything that gets in the way, and you learn how to keep your mind calm, not getting upset over the things that you have to give up. Otherwise we live just pushed around, pushed around all the time. This principle applies to all aspects of the path. When you observe the precepts, it's a promise to yourself. When you med meditate, it's a promise to yourself. Because who's going to look for your true well-being? Who's going to look out for it, aside from you? Nobody else out there. There are other people who may be helpful at some point, but you're the one ultimately who has to be responsible. As a John Sawat used to like to say, we each have one person, ourselves, that we're really responsible for. And yet we abandon our responsibilities. We know that things are certain, certain things are good for us, and yet we go off and do something else. Like the precepts. We take the precepts every week, every week. Now the message there is not that we're expected to that you are expected to forget them and to lose them in the course of the week and you have to get them all over again. The purpose of giving the precepts every week is to remind you how important they are. No killing, no stealing, no illicit sex, no lying, no taking of intoxicants, ever, at all, period. It's a promise you make to yourself when they say you that you undertake the precepts. It's a promise you make to yourself. Nobody out there is imposing them on you. But you realize that if you can abstain from these actions, you're not going to be harming yourself, and you're not going to be har harming others. It's interesting that when the Buddha says the way you harm yourself is to kill and steal and break the precepts in other ways. The way you harm other people is to get them to break the precepts. In other words, you respect the fact that they are agents and that they are going to be receiving the results of their actions. So you decide not to get them to do those things. That's how you really benefit them. And you benefit yourself by holding to the precepts. The precepts are short, clear, cut, easy to remember. So you have to look at yourself. Why do you forget them? especially the precept around lying. Even little white lies, even exaggerating the truth, that counts as a lie. You're misrepresenting the truth. If you want your speech to have value, you have to hold to the truth. This means also that you have to develop some discernment. There are certain things you know, certain types of information that if you give it to other people, they're going to abuse that. So you have to figure out how not to give that information to them without lying. And this way, holding the precepts is an exercise in discernment. So a lot of good things come from holding to the precepts, which is why we give them again and again and again. Not because we expect you to break them and you have to come back and ask for more. But we have to underline how important they are for all the other aspects of the path. So when you make a promise to yourself to do something good, hold to that promise. The mind is so changeable. In fact, there's nothing in the world that can change quite as quickly as the mind. You're going in one direction and turn around and go someplace else at the slightest instigation. And you have to ask yourself why. Part of it is forgetting, and part of it is because there are lots of different opinions in there. Your mind is like a committee. If you don't watch out, some of the bad committee members would come in and seize power, push the meeting off to another direction. You've got to make up your mind that you want something really good and you have to hold to it. You have to develop mindfulness, which is what we develop as we meditate to keep these principles in mind. Alertness to watch what you're doing, and ardency to really want to do it well. Because after all, it is your happiness we're talking about here, and nobody else is going to take care of it for you. And if you don't look after it now, when are you going to look after it? All you've got is right now, right now, right now. So make sure that every right now you do something skillful. You hold to the precepts when you're meditating, you hold to your object. That way, if you show some truth in your determination, 
then you're going to find the truth of the pra practice, find the truth of the path, the, the truth of the goal that comes at the end of the path. You have to be true in order to find the truth. That's an underlying principle of practice. So look to it that you're always true. And you find that the truth will reveal itself to you. <laughs>